Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Look Up. In the previous episode, we were taking images of Venus, uh, Jupiter, and also Mars. But I didn't get a chance to show you the instrument that we were using. Although there is a bit of footage there, I didn't get to formally introduce you to our instrument. So what I have here is a Mi Polaris 130. This is an equatorial um, telescope with an EQ2 mount. I bought this way back the year 2022, I think. Um, I bought this from Amazon and so far it's it's been good. This is actually my first telescope. So this is a very good beginner for me. This is a very good beginner telescope, especially if you want to look at first views of you know the planets, the moon, and ever since I've been using this, I haven't really uh, looked at the deep sky objects yet. But definitely in this series of videos, we will join you with me together and let's do that together when looking at other objects in the sky. So if you are wondering or curious to take on the hobby of astrophotography or astronomy, Personally, I would recommend this scope because this is beginner friendly and it's not that much expensive. Uh, me, I'm located based in Cebu, uh, in the Philippines. So it's kind of hard to look at uh, and shop at, you know, shop on telescopes uh, within the locality or within my place because there isn't much shops that, uh, you know, that display them. Uh, there's maybe some shops in Manila uh, so I had to order this from from Amazon so if you're from Cebu or in the Philippines so you might want to check this out as well as other shops maybe in, in different in, in, in the northern parts of the country especially uh, Manila so for me again this is uh, a very good telescope as a beginner and you know, I, when I first got into the hobby, I didn't really have any idea on how to, you know, how to use an equatorial mount, um, you know, fiddle with with the parts. So um, let me take this opportunity for those who are interested out there, and for those watching this video, uh, to give you like uh, a brief overview of the parts of an EQ2 mount with a 130 mm. This is a five inch. Um, tone and reflector telescope so let's dive in and see what the parts are so when I say equatorial mount what it basically means is it follows the path of the celestial objects um, across the celestial sphere if you um, pretend if let's say let's pretend it's a it's nighttime and you see the moon rising from the east and setting on the west so what an equatorial mount does it's you're able to track it based on its you know rising and setting across the sky so let me show you how it does that so it has um, two axes uh, we have the you know right ascension axis basically what it means is it tracks as an object or the moon or the planets or the stars ascends from the sky and sets this is called uh, right ascension axis, so basically this one that rotates, that pivots on its own, that's called the right ascension. And we have, let me unlock the, this, and we have this one, it's called the declination axis. So basically it makes you, you know, as you track objects in the sky, you can also change targets by using, you know, the declination, but also the right ascension. Basically, the declination is the other axis that completes, you know, the whole uh, equatorial now tracking system. So, so that's what it basically means when you say um, you have an equatorial map because you have the right ascension axis and the declination axis. So, so what that means is you can track objects as it, you know, as it moves across the sky. By using the right ascension so if you set this up properly like you point 
the you know you set this up uh, point you um, how should I say it? point it to north um, I think you pop the, 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 the term is polar align your equatorial now so in theory you would be able to track objects as it goes through the sky uh, without losing them in your field of view when you're you know observing them so this is how an equatorial mount is able to do that. Um, there are prerequisites in doing that, uh, like balancing the scope, because if you don't, um, you know, your, your scope will be, you know, taking on, you know, your mount will be taking on the weight of your telescope. So that's why they put in a counterbalancer here. So a prerequisite of properly tracking objects in the sky without, you know, too much jiggling or losing uh, the object in your field of view is you, you balance it. So in my previous video as well, you saw when I was balancing, um, you know, the mount and the scope with it, so I could be, I could be able to properly track objects in the sky. So um, we can make another video of you know a short video of how to balance your scope, but this here is basically how it does that. Because um, if it's not balanced, if you just if I just leave my hands off it, it will. It probably just you know veer off to the left or maybe to the right. So <clears throat> that's uh, why you need to balance the scope. Let's move closer and look at the parts of our telescope. We have our counterweight here to balance our telescope. We have our um, fine adjustment knobs for right ascension and declination. So this the scope is locked. So if I turn this left or right, it will give you some smooth adjustments as you track objects in the sky. Then we have a tripod legs. This is made of aluminum. This is an EQ2 mount, very portable, very light. This is also our accessory tray where you can put your, you know, uh, eyepieces or any accessory you want to bring with you when you view the sky. And then this is our latitude setting so wherever you are in the globe you adjust it according to your latitude so me I'm based in the Philippines I'm in Cebu so we are at 10 degrees I think 10 degrees 4 to 9 seconds but you can only you know you can estimate since because of the markings there so just set it to 10 degrees and you can set it through this knob so that's our mount um, they call this the setting circles, but I haven't really fiddled with, fiddled with this too much. Um, still a beginner, I admit, and maybe along in my journey, I will learn how to use the setting circles, but not for now. So we will now proceed to our mount, the OTA, optical tube assembly. So this is a reflector, a tone and reflector, and it's mounted in a Vixen mount here. So that's where how it gets secured in the scope and when I say it's a Newtonian reflector it's named reflector because it has a mirror at the you know at the back behind the scope it's the primary mirror and there's a secondary mirror so what it does is when the light enters from a star or from moon or whatever objects you want to view it goes back to the primary mirror gets reflected back onto the secondary here and it's positioned diagonally so when it bounces back it goes straight to your focusing tube and this is where you put your eyepiece on or your astro camera or whatever so that's how you are able to see objects um, wherever you point the telescope to so finally we have our finder scope so this is set with a laser so it projects the laser here like a laser uh, red dot then you just point this in an object in the sky and so how you do it, it's first you have to align the finder scope and your, you know, and the objects you see in the, your, you, align your, uh, uh, you align your finder scope with the objects that you see in the telescope, your, your main view. So when you align the dots, you now be able to find uh, where, you know, objects in the sky. Because if you do that straight from the eyepiece or straight from an astronomical camera, it would be very difficult to look at you know where your targets are. Now that we know the basic parts of an equatorial telescope, 
with an equatorial mount. I hope it gets you more excited in your astro journey. So let's keep looking up and clear skies.